In this video tutorial, we will introduce acid-base titrations. So if you recall, titrations are a laboratory method used to indirectly determine the concentration of a solution by reacting with another solution, also known as a titrant, of a known concentration. So what does it mean to indirectly measure something? Well, let's pretend. Let's pretend there's a very, very small tunnel, and inside the small tunnel are holes in the ground. But I don't know how many holes there are inside the tunnel, and I can't fit inside the tunnel itself. So what I'm going to do is I will roll some marbles into the tunnel, and if it does not come out the other side, I can assume the marble fell into the hole. So I continue doing this, throwing marbles into the tunnel, and waiting for it to come out the other side. If marble number 7 comes out the other side of the tunnel, how many holes were inside this tunnel? There must have been six. All right, so if marble number seven comes out, then I can assume that each of these holes was filled with a marble, allowing my marble to roll through the tunnel, and therefore there must have been six uh, holes. So was I actually measuring or counting the number of holes? No, I was counting the number of marbles. But because I know the relationship of marbles to holes is a one-to-one -one relationship, by counting the number of marbles, I've actually counted the number of holes. So we have indirectly measured one thing by directly measuring something else. Similarly, in this chemical reaction over here, I'm using hydrochloric acid to neutralize magnesium hydroxide base. All right? So how many HCl can each molecule of magnesium hydroxide neutralize? So for every one magnesium hydroxide, how many hydrochloric acids will it neutralize? So because it's a 1 to 2 ratio, 1 magnesium hydroxide can neutralize 2 hydrochloric acids. So remember, the ratio won't always be one to one. Maybe in a different case, you require three marbles to fill up one hole. Then it'd be a three to one ratio. But so long as you know how much of one chemical was used, you can stoichiometrically calculate the quantity of unknown that was neutralized. Now in the example of the tunnel and the holes, it's very easy to know when you filled up all the holes because a marble rolls out. But how do you know when a solution has been neutralized? Well, we use acid-base indicators chemicals that behave differently depending on how acidic or basic the environment is. This is the molecule phenothaline. In an acidic environment, you'll have lots of H plus ions floating around in solution, and these H plus ions are attracted to the O8 or the C double bond O group over here, turning it into this hydroxyl group instead. A small change to the molecular structure here results in a cascade of structural changes here, turning it into this. And these changes causes light to refract differently, making this molecule colorless, while this molecule pink. Meanwhile, the opposite is true. If you're in a basic solution with lots of hydroxyl groups floating around, these hydroxyl groups will track this hydrogen over here and rip it out towards hydroxyl groups. And again, that conformational change results in this structure. And that is how our indicators tell us whether the solution is acidic or basic. So let's go over a sample titration. In grade 11 chemistry, you were asked to titrate an unknown HCl concentration using a known sodium hydroxide solution. Uh, the sodium hydroxide solution was known because you made it, so if you made it, of course you knew what the concentration was, and we gave you an unknown HCl where you didn't know how much HCl molecules were floating around the solution. Now from the balance equation, we know it's a 1 to 1 ratio, so one sodium hydroxide is able to neutralize one hydrochloric acid molecule. So right now the indicator, phenothaline was the example we used, uh, is colorless because right now there's a lot of H plus ions floating around the solution. If I add a sodium hydroxide to it, it neutralizes one of the HCLs, but you still have a lot of HCL floating around, you still have a lot of H plus ions floating around, and so the indicator still shows that it's a colorless because the solution is overall acidic still. So you continue on with the titration adding more and more and more base until finally get to the point where all of the acid is pretty much neutralized except for one left. So long as you have acid floating around, even if there's not a lot, the solution is still acidic and the indicator remains colorless. By adding the last base, I have neutralized all my acids and my solution is considered to be neutral. This is known as the equivalence point, where the mole of acid and the mole of base are stoichiometrically equal. So there's no more sodium hydroxide, no more hydrochloric acid, just the salt and the water produced during this neutralization reaction. The solution now has neutral pH. However, it is unlikely that you'll ever be able to stop the titration at the equivalence point. 
to be able to match up each molecule of sodium hydroxide with one HCl perfectly and having nothing left over or in excess is very, very, very unlikely. Each droplet of sodium hydroxide from your burette contains quadrillions of quadrillions of quadrillions of hydroxide ions. So it's very, very difficult to precisely react molecules on a one-to-one -one basis. So if the equivalence point is practically impossible to reach, the next best thing is called the end point. That is where the indicator changes color to signify a pH change. So just like in our example, I can't just stop at marble number six and that's it. I have to throw in the seventh marble. I have to overshoot the number of holes in order to indicate that every hole has been filled out with a marble. Similarly, I can't just stop at the equivalence point. I have to overshoot it, adding a little extra base to cause my uh, indicator to change pink or whatever color your indicator may change to. And that's why during a titration, we always ask you to stop once you've reached a very, very faint permanent pink color. A faint pink color indicates that you are weakly basic, so you've only overshot the neutral point by a little bit. Now I can count how many bases I threw inside, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight bases, and say that my acids that were originally in my solution was slightly less than eight. If you ended the titration at a very, very dark pink color, then you've made the solution very basic and you added in way too many bases. At that point, you'd be overestimating how much base you threw in there and again, overestimating how much acid was originally inside your beaker. It would be like overshooting this with 20 marbles and saying, oh, there must have been 19 more holes inside then. No, we only want one marble to come out, not 19 other marbles to come out. Otherwise, we overestimate the number of holes that were inside that small tunnel or overestimating how much acid was originally inside my solution before it was neutralized. Alright, so let's do a sample calculation involving the titration of a strong acid with a weak base. In this example, we're going to try to find out what is the concentration of an unknown HCl. We are going to use a sodium hydroxide that we created so we do know its concentration. So the unknown hydrochloric acid is inside the Erlenmeyer flask, and your known concentration of NaOH is inside the burette itself. Because HCl is a strong acid, it will 100% ionize. You'll see a lot of H plus ions and chlorine ions floating around solution, making the pH below 7, which is in the acidic range. So when we click the begin titration button and add 5 mL of sodium hydroxide, adding in the NaOH will cause you to produce water and also NaCl. So there's your Na ions and Na ions and of course Cl ions stay separate because sodium chloride is a salt that dissolves very, very easily and so it remains in its dissociated state as well. Although we added some sodium hydroxide to our solution, it still remains acidic because not enough of the H plus ions were neutralized. So if we add another 5 mils, again, we neutralize more of the H plus ions, creating more water, more sodium chloride in its dissociated state, but not enough, so the pH still remains below 7. And, but you do realize the pH is still increasing. The solution is less acidic, but becoming a little more basic. We continue by adding more sodium hydroxide, Again, more water molecules are formed, more NaCl is formed, add another bit of NaOH, and again, more water, more NaCl is formed, but we still have H plus ions flowing around, so therefore our pH is still going to be below 7, it's still in the acidic range. I'm going to continue adding more NaOH, and the moment we neutralize the last two HCl's, the pH skyrockets to a pH of 7, because pH 7 means you're completely neutral, you have no more acid, no more base, it's just water and the salt floating around, which is the case we have here. This is known as the equivalence point. But as I mentioned earlier, the equivalence point is practically impossible to reach. Uh, it's just not likely for you to be able to react HCl and NaOH on a one-to-one -one basis. So more than likely, you will overshoot the equivalence point by just a little bit, hopefully, making your solution basic and therefore changing your indicator to a light pink color. We can then record how much sodium hydroxide you used to neutralize all the HCl in there. And now you have the concentration of the NaOH, as well as the volume of the NaOH used. It allows you to rearrange this equation so that you can find the moles of NaOH you threw into the Erlenmeyer flask. Since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, for every one sodium hydroxide you neutralize one HCl, therefore you have the moles of HCl. Now, during the titration, you chose how much HCl you poured into the Erlenmeyer flask originally for each trial. So you also have this value over here. Since concentration is equal to moles divided by volume, and you have those two numbers, you've now found the concentration of your unknown uh, HCl sample. All right, so let's do a sample question. 
What volume of 0.250 ohm molar aluminum hydroxide is required to titrate 32 milliliters of 0.115 molar carbonic acid? If you'd like to give it a try first, press pause. When you're ready, press play and we'll take it up. All right, so the first step is to write out the chemical equation. So aluminum hydroxide, carbonic acid, aluminum carbonate is the salt that's produced, and of course water, because this is a double displacement reaction, specifically a neutralization reaction, we always make salt and water. Now don't forget to balance the equation, otherwise you won't have your stoichiometric ratios. So now I know two aluminum hydroxides are required to neutralize three carbonic acids. Now let's transfer all the information we have up here, down here, and organize it. But of course, when we're dealing with molar concentrations, we have to convert our milliliters to liters. Now, as I mentioned before, if you have no clue what to do, let's convert to moles. Since concentration is equal to mole divided by volume, I can rearrange it so that mole is equal to C times V. My concentration, 0.115 molar, the volume, 0.0320 liters, and that gives me 0.00368 moles of carbonic acid. Because it's a 2 to 3 ratio between aluminum hydroxide to carbonic acid, divide this number by 3, multiply it by 2, and we get 0 0.002453 moles of aluminum hydroxide that has been neutralized during this titration. Since C is equal to molar of V, I can rearrange that to make V equals the molar of C. I have the mole value, 0 0.002453. I have the concentration, 0 0.250 liters. Punch that in, and my volume is 0 0.00981 liters of aluminum hydroxide is required to neutralize this solution of carbonic acid. All right? So during a titration reaction, there's going to be no more acid, no more base. They're all going to be neutralized. All you'll have left is water and salt. We call this the equivalence point. So let's try this question here. 25 milliliters of 0.35 ohm molar magnesium hydroxide is used to titrate 15 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. So what is the hydrochloric acid concentration there? The first step is to write out the chemical equation and don't forget to balance it. We need those stoichiometric ratios. Next up, I'm going to want to put this information directly underneath the chemical compounds so I can organize it properly. Again, don't forget to convert your milliliters to liters. And since we don't have enough information to solve on this side, let's start converting to moles on this side. Since mole is equal to C times V, take my C, take the V, multiply them together and get 0 0.00875 moles of magnesium hydroxide. From there, it's a 1 to 2 ratio where 1 magnesium hydroxide neutralizes 2 hydrochloric acids. So divide by 1 multiplied by 2, and you get 0 0.0175 moles of hydrochloric acid was neutralized during this titration reaction. Since C is equal to molar V, I've got the mole of HCl, I've got the volume of HCl, divide the 2, and you get 1.17 moles per liter as the concentration of my hydrochloric acid. Let's try this last question. 35 milliliters of 0 0.150 molar nitric acid is added to 25 milliliters of 0.500 molar sodium hydroxide. What is the pH of the resulting solution? Now this one is not really a titration reaction yet because we haven't completely reached the equivalence point. Right? So what happens is one of them is going to be left over. Nitric acid, sodium hydroxide, they're being combined together, but who's going to run out first? Whoever is the excess reagent, whoever is left over, will determine the pH of the solution. So if there's excess nitric acid, then the pH is going to be uh, below 7. It's going to be an acidic range. If there is excess sodium hydroxide, then the pH will be above 7. There's going to be in the basic range. So to find that out, we first need to find out who is the limiting reagent. All right, so first write out the chemical equation and balance it. And there we go, a nice double displacement neutralization reaction. And of course, nice because it's all 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. There's no balancing required here. It's already balanced. So I'm going to take my information above and organize it below here. And now we can convert these values into moles giving me 0 0.00525 moles of nitric acid and 0 0.0125 moles of sodium hydroxide. Because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, I can already predict just by looking at the two that this is going to be my limited reagent. But if you want to confirm it the long way, just go ahead and convert to moles of water or moles of sodium nitrate. Just as long as you pick one of them and stick with it, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. So don't choose one as sodium nitrate and the other one as water. Choose them both as water or choose them both as sodium nitrate to compare them. Hopefully, once you've done so, you'll find that HNO3 is the limiting reagent. So if this runs out first, that means there's going to be leftover sodium hydroxide in excess. But how much sodium hydroxide is left in excess? So I do a 1 to 1 ratio from HNO3 into sodium hydroxide to see how much of this will use up this. And we find that 0 0.00525 moles of sodium hydroxide was used because it's a 1 to 1. From there, this is the original amount of sodium hydroxide. And this is how much sodium hydroxide was used. We can subtract these two values. 
and we get 0 0.00725 moles of sodium hydroxide left. But the question is asking, what is the pH of the solution? So I need to convert this value into a concentration for sodium hydroxide, and then from there calculate pH. So C is equal to mole over V, I've got my mole value, but my volume is not just the volume of the nitric acid. And the volume is not just the volume of sodium hydroxide, I have a new volume now because I added acid with base together. So because these two volumes have added together, I have to add these two volumes to find the new solution volume. When I divide these two values together, I get 0.121 moles per liter of sodium hydroxide. But let's take a look at our big game plan over here now. I'm trying to solve for pH. We know that pH plus pOH adds up to 14. So I can rearrange this equation. pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH. From there, I need to find pOH, which is negative logarithm of the hydroxide concentration, but I don't have the hydroxide concentration. I have the sodium hydroxide concentration. So what I need to do in order to convert from one compound to another is set up my ratios. Since I know that each sodium hydroxide, when it breaks up, will release one hydroxide ion, well, if it's a one-to-one -one ratio here, and I have 0.121 molar sodium hydroxide, then I also have 0.121 moles per liter of hydroxide ions. From there, I can plug it into the pOH calculation. Negative logarithm of 0.121 gives me 0.917. I can then substitute it into this equation, allowing me to convert pOH into a pH. So 14 minus 0.917 equals 13.1. Thus, the pH of the solution is in the basic range, which makes sense because the sodium hydroxide is left over and sodium hydroxide is a base. All right, and that is acid-base titrations and acid-base neutralization questions. If you have any other questions, let me know.